The Realme GT2 Pro is not only the first smartphone to release with a bio-based polymer backplate, but the world's first mass-produced smartphone to make use of a 50 megapixel, 150 degree field of view ultra-wide camera. Alongside that crazy ultra-wide lens sits another 50 megapixel main sensor, as well as a microscope camera. The GT2 Pro also packs in a new QHD Plus LTPO display, 4 nanometer run Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, 65 watt charging, and loads of goodies in the box. With all that said, it's time to deep dive into my full review of the Realme GT2 Pro. The Realme GT2 Pro comes in four different color variants, that being steel black, titanium blue, which are both frosted glass, or you could pick up a paper finished biopolymer style, paper white or paper green. I have the paper green variant, which looks fantastic. I wish that they included a paper like case in the box, which matched the color. Nevertheless, we get a black silicon case and still does the job for day one, but you really have to feel this device. It sounds amazing when you scrape against it. It, it feels fantastic and it protects the environment. What is there not to like? about the design of this new Realme GT2 Pro. Inside of it sits a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 65 watt wide charging. Unfortunately, no wireless charging here. At the helm is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, LP DDR5 RAM, UFS 3.1 storage, but unfortunately no IP water and dust certification. What it does have though is a Gorilla Glass Victus display as well as an aluminum frame. You do also get a Gorilla Glass back if you do opt for the blue or black variants of the device, or you can pick up the bio-based polymer back that I have here with me today, which is quite a bit lighter, but still the same thickness. Cutting into that paper-like design sits a trio of cameras, namely the 15 millimeter ultra-wide sensor, which is 50 megapixels, and it is of course an ISO cell J in one sensor with a crazy high field of view of 150 degrees. Alongside that is a 24 millimeter main sensor, which is a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 sensor, and completing the trio is a microscope lens and while it is interesting to use which we'll get to in a second unfortunately there is no telephoto camera this time around that 150 degree field of view ultra wide sensor does make for some awesome fisheye mode shots as well as regular shots but we don't have 50 megapixel mode in that one we can only use 119 degrees field of view for 50 megapixel mode here's the main sensor and bidding it down looks actually a hell of a lot better thanks to ai and moving on to two times digital zoom which you can actually shoot at 50 and bin down as well it looks pretty decent but going to five times digital zoom on the 50 megapixel mode for some strange reason gets a bit wonky and blurry but it looks a bit better when bin down same thing can be said with 10 times digital zoom but 20 times digital zoom there is no 50 megapixel mode and it doesn't look the best i've seen but it's not the worst either we do have the ultra wide camera at the back of this thing which is honestly one of the main selling points of this device it looks absolutely fantastic and I have so much fun with that fish eye mode effect. Unfortunately, you cannot actually record video with the fish eye effect or 150 degree field of view, which you'll see in a moment, but it still makes for some really interesting looking shots and taking a normal photo of my mate Groot over here, switching on portrait mode gives for some perfect edge detection. Moving on to close up shots, unfortunately there is no macro mode over here and there's no macro sensor either, and it doesn't really work with ultra wide, but we do have that micro lens, which is a microscopic camera, and it does a decent job getting nice and close and personal to subjects. I can't actually say I prefer it as opposed to a macro camera because unless you're a scientist, this is not really gonna be that useful for you. And yes, it might be something that you're gonna show your friends on day one or say you haven't seen that friend in two months and you wanna show him the microscope lens that your phone has. It will be really cool for a couple minutes, but after that, you're never really gonna use it in person. It makes for some cool video too. You can record using it at 720p 30fps, but it's just two megapixels, so the quality is not that great. We can also record bokeh video at 1080p and 30fps, even though the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset is capable of 4K bokeh. I still have yet to see that on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered smartphone device, and the edge detection is questionable in the video mode. We have 8K, 24 frames per second main, and main obviously being the main camera, this is not kitted with the ultra wide. It's a bit janky, but still super clear. 4K 60 is super smooth. One of the smoothest I've ever seen before. 
and its clarity is right up there with the best of the best in terms of flagship names. But the ultra wide is capped at 30 FPS at 4K and it does some weird stuff if you look at the distortion around the edges. Hopefully this gets patched with a future software update. So there's no 60 FPS with ultra wide at 4K, but there is at 1080p and it looks a hell of a lot better than it did with 4K because obviously there's no edge distortion. And recording with ultra wide at night, 1080p, 60 FPS, it's pretty much pitch black, a lot of grains around here. It looks okay, 4K, 30 FPS. Once again, some distortion on the edges, but Things are a tad bit brighter. And moving on to 4K 60 FPS using the main camera actually looks pretty darn fantastic thanks to the new ISPs that we have within the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset. And moving on to 4K 30, while it is brighter, it's a lot more grainy and it's a lot more stuttery. I think I'd actually prefer to stick to 4K 60 FPS when filming at night using the main camera. 8K 24 frames per second at night actually does an okay job. A little bit of sparkly effects around there. I'm not sure if you can see that. A bit weird. I don't think the phone is too optimized for its lenses and its software and its chipset. Nevertheless, fisheye mode at night and 150 degree field of view at night. They look okay. There's no night mode option for them, though there is a night mode option for the 119 degrees field of view ultra wide cam. A bit strange, but it looks okay. Night mode off on the main sensor and night mode on. Night mode is supposedly five times better thanks to the new Snapdragon HN1 chipset, though I can't really say this is five times better than what I've seen from Realme in the past in terms of night mode photography. It looks okay, but zooming in because there's no telephoto camera, everything is just a bit blurry and grainy. I can't really recommend this phone for its camera as a whole. It takes some awesome photos in terms of ultra wide as well as some really good main shots, but overall it's just not that consistent. Taking photos at night of a close subject, there is no night mode photography for bokeh portraits. But we do have flash modes for the micro lens if you enter that kind of thing. The cameras are a bit of a mixed bag for me, but I do have so much fun with that ultra wide sensor. We do have a textured power button on the right hand side, volume rocker on the left hand side. At the bottom, we have a dual SIM 5G standby tray, no expandable storage, but there is a water resistant seal, even though there's no IP certification, USB 2.0 at the bottom, as well as its first dual stereo speaker, which is paired with Dolby Atmos. The second one is found within the earpiece and the selfie camera is a 32 megapixel F 2.4 snapper that takes more than decent photos. I wasn't expecting them to come out this good and the portrait mode has almost perfect edge detection. Yo, what's up guys, Technic here recording a 1080p at what I can only assume to be 30 FPS on the brand new Realme GT2 Pro. The real reason, the real me reason why I say 30 FPS on the selfie cam is because there's only two options. Option one being 720p, option two being 1080p. There's no option to flick between the frame rate when recording with the selfie cam, which is a bit of a bummer. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think of the audio and video quality when using the selfie cam on the Realme GT2 Pro. You can also use bokeh video while the edge detection is not as good as it is with its photo mode, you can record at 1080p. 1080p, 30 FPS using the selfie cam at night does not look the best. It does not look the worst. It's just kind of there and selfies at night, it is pretty bad guys, even with night mode on. Portrait mode doesn't have a night mode option, but it's not the best and the flash mode just washes out the colors though, not quite as bad as what I've seen with recent Xiaomi devices. And moving on to brighter things over here, turning on the device and getting welcomed to some awesome always on display options. We do have an under display fingerprint sensor, which is awesome and it works as it should. Unfortunately, not ultrasonic. And there are, like I mentioned, loads of different always on display options, including silhouette where you can set yourself as your own always on display. And you can create your own always on display thanks to kaleidoscopes. And my one doesn't look the best, but you can do some interesting things with it. I'm not sure if you can see that wallpaper in the background when using the 2D face unlock which of course uses the selfie cam, but it's actually a paper-like wallpaper to match that of the phone's backplates. We are kitted to Realme UI 3.0 on top of Android 12. It is literally the same as Color OS 12, guys. It even says it in the settings, Color OS version 12. I'm gonna very briefly touch on the software since I made a full dedicated review on Color OS 12. Make sure you check that out after you finish watching this video, such as personalizations, which is right up my alley. ColorOS 12 is one of the best softwares I have ever used and I really don't need to sell it to anyone. There is almost no clutter and the clutter that there is is just so useful. Of course, there is Google and the Play Store does indeed work as well. And the haptics honestly feel like a thousand dollar flagship device coming from the likes of Samsung or iPhone. And of course, we also have dual speakers paired with Dolby Atmos. So let's give them a listen, shall we?
Creamy. Now that we've heard those feature rich Dolby Atmos dual stereo speakers, what about some gaming? Starting things off here with Genshin Impact on the highest possible settings. You gotta remember the game is capped at 60 FPS, so even though the phone can go up to 120, the game is limited to 60 and we're hitting between 48 and 57 frames per second, which is pretty average for a flagship device running a Snapdragon HN1 chipset. Next up we have Bullet Force. Now this has an unlimited frames per second cap, meaning that if the screen can do 120 FPS, then the game will do 120 FPS. But the Realme for some reason is capping it at 60, whereas the Motorola Edge X30 and Xiaomi 12 Pro, which are running the same chipsets and very similar displays, are not capping it. What the Xiaomi is capping is Real Racing 3, same as the Realme over here, the Motorola Edge X30 didn't with the same chipset, so we are seeing only 60 FPS here. We do have RAM expansion, which makes our 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM go all the way up to 19 gigs, but do bear in mind this uses the UFS storage and not the actual RAM. What does make the phone go quicker is the brand new four nanometer Snapdragon HN1 octa-core CPU, which is supposedly 20% more powerful and 30% more power efficient. And when paired with the new GT mode, which makes your phone even more powerful, we got an Antutu score of 1,006,699 points, which was just shy of the Xiaomi 12 Pro, but did beat the Motorola Edge X30 running the same chipset. And when it comes to CPU performance within Geekbench version 5, the single core score scored pretty well, but the multi-core score is actually worse than the Xiaomi Mix 4, which is using last generation's Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset. And when it comes to GPU performance, thanks to 3D Mark Wildlife, we got a score of 9,525 points and an average frames per second of 57, which is absolutely incredible, but still nothing is yet to beat the almighty king Motorola Edge X30 with a crazy FPS score of 60.1. Not that you'll actually notice a difference though. What you will notice a difference with is the WQHD Plus display here with a crazy high PPI of 526. And of course the 120 Hertz refresh rate, you can choose 60, or 120 or auto, and auto uses the LTPO 2.0 display to fluctuate between one and 120 FPS. And as you can see with my on-screen FPS counts at the top right corner, it actually does just that, reaching almost zero FPS sometimes. Not sure if that's a bit of a glitch. I guess you could just say that's one FPS. We do have 120 Hertz max mode over here, and it kind of sits around 120, maybe 110, 120, give or take, but we have a thousand hertz touch sampling rate. Not many phones around there actually have this kind of technology packed inside of them. The display itself is 6.7 inches. It is an AMOLED display, and as many of you may be happy about, it is a flat display and is supposedly 50% less power hungry. It has 1.07 billion colors, supports HDR10 plus content, and has a 100% DCI-P3 color gamut rating. And the cherry on top is of course the crazy high brightness at an astonishing 1400 nits, really rounding off this display as one of my all-time favorite displays, considering the fact that it is also flat. The Realme GT2 Pro has a more than decent selfie camera that is tucked in the corner of its breathtaking QHD Plus LTPO 2.0 display. Not to mention it actually cares about the environment thanks to its biopolymer design that I've actually really grown to like. It's kitted with an extremely powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, run on 4 nanometer process node technology, has a huge 5000 milliamp hour battery, very fast wide charging, and a crazy cool 150 degree ultra wide camera which takes in impressive photos. Unfortunately, you cannot record video using the 150 degree field of view mode and ultra wide is capped at 30 FPS when recording at 4K. The IMX766 main sensor takes some incredible shots despite being a tad outdated and while the micro lens is interesting at first, it's actually pretty useless in practice and I feel that a telephoto lens would have been a lot more beneficial. That being said, the Realme GT2 Pro is still an exceptional smartphone. It's just hard to recommend as a truly pre premium flagship due to its lack of wireless charging, an IP water resistance rating, and a telephoto camera, which in turn makes the paper-like Realme device just out of reach of true greatness.